There's a lyric from an old Metallica song that says, Anytime a man lies, he murders a part of the world. Now, we're talking about a video game today, but the thing is, I want to talk about something that's associated with that video game. Claims that were made about it, and ultimately the falsehoods and why they're really bad for people who are actually trying to fight the culture war. So, strap yourselves in. This will be a little bit of a deep rant of mine, but it'll be an interesting discussion nonetheless. If you enjoy content like this, do not forget, like, share, and subscribe, especially on that share bit, because we're trying to get the channel up to 20,000 subscribers. We're inching our way there, but we need your help, guys. We need you guys to share the content in other Discord servers, just about anywhere you can, because even though Susan's gone, the algorithm still doesn't like me very much. So I am kind of stuck. I've been that way for a while, ever since I got named on that one document. Some of you might remember that stupid chart that, like, tried to attach Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan to, like, Nazis. Like, I was actually on that, and they were trying to attach me to Nazis, too. And it seems like everybody who was on that list got screwed over by YouTube algorithms and things like that. I am one of those people. I'm still fighting this algorithm to try to grow this channel, and it has not been easy. So, anyway... Let's go ahead and get to the topic at hand. When it comes right down to it, Resident Evil 4 Remake is out and it is not woke. Not at all. It's not even close. Look, I have imbibed woke entertainment. I have seen it for what it is. I've seen it at its worst. And to be completely honest with you, this ain't it, Chief. This ain't even close. I mean, for God's sake, like, this is a video game where, like, women are murdered and ultimately, you know, kidnapped several times and implanted with bugs and all this stuff. Like, it's pretty messed up. It is a horror game, right? And beautiful thing about this particular Resident Evil remake is that they took Resident Evil 4 and actually made it close to scary. But anyway, that's a whole other thing that if people want me to review the game, I'll actually talk about. But regardless... I saw video after video, and post after post, and tweet after tweet, and so on and so forth, saying that Resident Evil 4 Remake is going to be woke. Now, the reasons for it, I, I never really saw a consistent logic there. The probably most notable I can think of were people saying that... Be something about, like, Ashley's boobs were going to be non-existent, I think was the claim. And then, uh, because she was wearing a sweater. Even though she actually loses that later in the game and she's just wearing basically her classic outfit. Then, of course, there were... <laughs> there was a post on Steam that I thought was hilarious. Of somebody complaining literally about, like, the lack of upskirts. That's not woke disguise, it's just you being a coomer. Come on. Like, come on now. Like, there's there's websites to get yourself off. Like, you don't need to play video games to do that. Like, seriously. There's plenty of coomer stuff in other places. There's Senran Kagura, things of that nature. You know, you can go ahead and, you know, go to that. But, you know, that, that's that ain't, this ain't it, Chief. Anyway, point being is that this bothers me whenever I see this sort of thing because I'm somebody who has been involved in and kind of forced into the culture war a long time ago. It's not something I really wanted for myself. Um, it goes all the way back to when I was working for Blistered Thumbs and how I lost that job. And that's a whole other story I'm not going to talk about here. Just know that that was my first encounter with the far left and how they try to destroy people's lives. Regardless, um, it's something that I've seen for a long time. It's something that I have had to deal with personally. It's not fun. And um, when it comes right down to it, it is a uh, it is a terrible thing to have to go through. But the, um, the thing that just annoys me is that oftentimes whenever this sort of thing happens and these claims of wokeness come out and then they end up not being true, which... It happens. I mean, nobody's perfect. You know, every once in a while you're going to get it wrong. But what annoys the heck out of me is whenever people won't just admit that they were wrong. 
they either get really quiet or they will double down on what went on. And let, let's talk about that for a second. Let's actually look at it. So for those people out there that show concern about media being this way, you have a reason to be concerned and I am right there with you. I get it. You know, there's reason to be concerned because at times um, there's some very concerning things that happen and nobody wants to see Resident Evil turn into Velma, right? Nobody wants to see Resident Evil turn into the last into the last Jedi. Yada yada yada. Like that's that's just um not something that you want to see. And we even got small tastes of that in I think it was Welcome to Raccoon City uh where they like race swapped a bunch of characters for for great justice or what the fuck ever. But anyway, I can understand the concerns. With that said, I I don't really take the people who are on the internet and show their concern that way. I don't really take it that seriously. I'll just basically be my smug self and kind of rib you a little bit just to do it. Just to be like, hey, you know, let's not, like, don't don't jump to conclusions because you, you end up looking like a douchebag. You know, it's just life lesson shit, you know. And that that is what it is. Um... What really bothers me is when it comes to, like, fellow content creators. And I know some people are going to be like, don't punch right. No, 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 I'm punching right. But I'm punching right in love. It's, this is not a, this is not uh, me swinging my fist in enmity, okay? This is me um, punching you in the shoulder to remind you not to be such an idiot. You know, it's not something I do out of hatred. The simple fact is that if you're a content creator you do have a duty to your audience and that is to give them accurate information. And if you do editorial and then you're like, Hey, I think this is going to be this way, but then you end up being wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying, Hey, I was wrong, you know, and doing follow up because I'm going to be honest about something. There, there's this weird trend that came about around 2016, 2017 among content creators especially those that were, you know, more conservative leaning, is that if you screw something up, then you shouldn't apologize, ever. And I think that that doesn't make a lick of sense. Now, where it comes from is the old, the adage of don't apologize to social justice warriors because social justice warriors want to want you to apologize to gain control over you. You know, they want you to apologize for being you, which is not something you should ever apologize for. But for some reason, some people went further than that and just thought, if you ever apologize about anything or if you ever admit that you're wrong about something, then you're going to lose your audience because they're all going to think that you're caving into the SJWs. That's nonsense, guys. I can think of political content creators that have flat out admitted they were wrong about things more than once and they've still got substantial followings. Tim Pool, anybody? You know, I've seen Tim Pool, you know, say he got stuff wrong all the time. You know, like, and there's others as well. Probably others that I just can't think of their names off the top of my head. But that that idea that if you apologize, you're going to lose your audience or everybody's going to think less of you, da 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 there's, there's no evidence for that. There's no nothing. So this idea that you can't apologize for getting something wrong... You know, like, you're going to lose everything. No, you're not. Like, and to be honest with you, that's... If people get mad at you for genuinely being wrong and then genuinely showing concern that you were wrong and feeling regret that you were wrong, if people get mad at you about that, that's a testament to their poor character, not yours. And you don't have to be poor in character just because they are. But anyway, when it comes right down to it... um. That's one thing that kind of comes with it is like there's this idea that if you apologize, then you're going to end up, you know, just as bad as the SGWs, blah, 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 blah. No evidence to, to show that that's the truth. But anyway, the second thing is the more disturbing of the two. And this one really bothers me is the idea that if people lied about this, you know, they knew out of the gate that this this wasn't going to be woke. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think that there was any indication that it was going to be not even close um, then, uh, and, and then you lied about this, 
knowingly lie that this isn't going to be what's going on. And then you don't apologize and you double down on your lie and you continue to claim that this is something that it isn't. Tell me how you're any different than the social justice warriors who lie and deceive and do all these terrible things. Tell me how you're different than they are on a moral level, aside from maybe you didn't try to cancel people. Like, because they lie about everything. They they double down on everything, even though they do morally reprehensible things, you know. If they are the bad guys, why do you want to behave like the bad guys? Like, that doesn't make any sense. It's not really conducive to anything. But beyond that, being somebody who has kept his eye on and been a part of this whole mess for years now, what annoys the heck out of me is whenever I see that sort of thing, and then you've got hundreds of thousands of video views about lies and hundreds of thousands of likes and shares and retweets and all this other stuff on things that have advertising on them based on lies and then you're not willing to retract and things like that and you're going to double down on it. What that tells me is you're getting a substantial paycheck based on lies and you don't care as long as you get paid. And that is morally reprehensible to me. It is absolutely disgusting. It is... I, I don't see a way back from that on a moral level without some true soul-searching, prayer, and petition to God to try to improve yourself as a man or a woman. That is genuinely what I see whenever I you know, see that sort of nonsense. Like, there is something truly disturbing about um, about that sort of thing to me. So, my whole thing is, if you are indeed doing that, what you don't realize you're doing is you're spitting on people. You're spitting on guys like me that have been a part of this for a long time. You're spitting on guys that legitimately care about the media that they consume. And they care about the media that their children may consume someday. Or the other people around them, nieces and nephews. Which is one of my primary concerns because I have so many nieces and nephews. You know, I genuinely get concerned about that. And I get concerned about where the culture is going because I want them to have better lives than what I had growing up. Not worse. And when it comes right down to it, there is a mortifying idea that you're willing to just take the anger and worries of all these people and then just get a paycheck and not really show that you care, that you care more about money than you do about the cause. That is... That is disturbing, and it tells me about your character, because at that point, you're not really fighting for the culture. You're fighting for your own paycheck. You're just a grifter at that point, and that's not the type of person you want to be. I've seen a lot of people throughout the years that are grifters that come in, and then they're gone, and then you realize that they made a lot of money in a very short amount of time, and when it comes right down to it, it just ends up with them being reprehensible human beings, you know, and we're going to continue to see stuff like that. And this is, this is just something I would ask. Like, just don't do that to yourselves, man. It's just not, um, it's not conducive to anything. And man, it sucks. <sighs> so don't do that to yourselves. Don't lie. Don't lie about these things because Michael Cliff Burton said, you really do murder a part of the world when you do it. All right, enough about me philosophizing. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit that like button. Subscribe the whole nine yards. If you enjoyed it also, I will let you guys know the next video essay I plan on doing and handing to Shirt Dude is one that is basically titled Resident Evil 5 Was Never Racist. And I think you guys are really going to dig that one. Also, real quick shilling, 
my book, Three Nights, Four Days, Part 2. Still live on Indiegogo, still trying to get to 15K. Work is proceeding quite well on this one. It's going to be amazing and done before you realize it. Trust me on this one. Another thing, my first novella, American Monsters, the genesis of Project Lazarus, still has not hit its paltry goal of $500 for some reason. I understand things are tight these days, guys, but... You know, I've made it available for only $9 and the cost of shipping. And if you can't afford the shipping, it's just $9 digital and you get yourself a good novella I worked really hard on. But if it's not something that people are interested, I do understand I am just going to move on if this doesn't get funded by the end of 30 days. So it is what it is. On that note, guys, I want to thank you all for watching this video. My name is Micah Curtis, your favorite vanilla gorilla. I'll see you guys next time.